Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about modding my original Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer to have a different display. It came with an LCD display. I'm going to modify it to have a vacuum fluorescent display. So, I've been a fan of vacuum fluorescent displays for a while. I've used them in other projects. Um, if you watch my my electronics channel, you'll see, for example, my RC2014, where it has this gorgeous uh, 4x40 VFD in the front of it. Um, these are Noritake modules, and the nice thing about the Noritake modules is they have a pinout that is compatible with common LCDs. So here is the display board off of a Prusa i3 Mark III um, 3D printer. And if you assembled your kit, then you probably remember assembling this board. Um, came all put together with a couple of ribbon cables sticking onto the back. You stuck this in the plastic parts and you screwed it onto the front of the Mark III and you were done with it. So this board is actually a composite of two boards. This top one is the LCD. These are commodity LCDs that you can find on eBay and such. And then this back one is a board by um, LDO and they're soldered together with this large header. Um, so someone at Prusa or someone at LDO, I don't know who does it, but you know, they slap these things together and solder them together, send it to you, and then you assemble it as a kit. But the fortunate thing is that these LCDs are a commodity. There are many of them with the same pinouts. You, so you can buy yourself different colors of displays. You can buy yourself ones that are reversed. You can buy yourself ones that are very, very dark background without the backlight. Um, there's an RGB mod floating around out there. There's lots of stuff you can do with these displays and uh, the thing I did is I replaced it with a vacuum fluorescent display. I bought the vacuum fluorescent display on eBay. If you watch eBay occasionally you'll find a deal so I got um, Noritake displays for about half the cost of what you'd pay on DigiKey. Um, here's an example of the DigiKey page. Um, Noritake displays are expensive. Um, so anyway, how do you go about doing this mod? Uh, well, the first thing you can do is you can take your board out of the Prusa and you can desolder it. Um, you'd go in with your desoldering gun, desolder all those connectors. It's kind of a pain in the butt. If you go to printedsolid.com, they will sell you the board without the LCD so you don't have to desolder. Um, so that's exactly what I did. I actually ordered the board from Printed Solid a while ago. Um, had it all on hand, ready to go um, for when my VFD got in. Given that the Noritake VFD is at more or less the same footprint as this LCD, it's just a matter of replacing one with the other. So the LCD does have a couple more pins on the header than your Noritake VFD does. And those are the LED anode and cathode for the backlight. So VFDs don't have backlights. Uh, so the printed solid board, when I got it, I just snipped those last two pins because I didn't need them. Threw on the VFD, soldered it together. Now if I'd have been thinking, I'd have filmed that, but I was kind of anxious to get this thing together and see it working, so I didn't actually film myself soldering it up. So anyway, let me jump to the soldered module and you will see this with the VFD put on it. Hi, this here is a Noritake CU20045SCPB-W2J. Um, this is actually an older module. I scavenged it off of uh, eBay. Got a better deal than I got from getting from Mauser or DigiKey or someplace. I've soldered it to this uh, board. This board was originally with no LCD. It came from printed solid. It's intended for you to put your own LCDs on. So yeah, I attached the vacuum fluorescent display and I'm going to go hook it up now and try it out. Okay, I've kind of temporarily attached it to the front of my 3D printer, my Prusa i3 Mark III. Um, I've attached the cables in the correct orientation. Let's turn it on and see if we get something. Let's also turn off this light. Uh, there we go, original Prusa i3, Prusa Research. Looks to be more or less working. All right. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Okay, so here's the display, all reassembled in the printer. It fit in the original Prusa case just fine. You know, it's a little bit apprehensive because the display does have that glass um, tube up at the top, and it does have some inductors and components up there. I wasn't quite sure it was going to fit, but it went right in there, just like the uh, just like the old one did. So you know, it navigates the menus and stuff just fine. Everything looks like it should. So 
So I'm not sure how well the picture's turning out on the camera. Often when I uh, film a VFD, I will get kind of a glowing, blurry sort of effect. Um, I think that's just the camera. I don't have the exposure set quite right for something that is, is kind of bright and emissive like that. Um, but this is very, very sharp. Um, you can easily see with your naked eye the individual dots um, in the display. So I do have on order an orange filter that will go in front of this and turn it into an orange display. Ordered that filter from China, should be here in a couple weeks. Uh, don't know exactly what it's going to look like because I've never done one of those filters before, but um, that would be even cooler as if this was in an orange color uh, with the vacuum fluorescent display rather than uh, green. So we will see how that works out. So there, you saw that little flicker. It does that maybe every minute or so. I don't recall if the uh, if the LCD did that as well. Certainly L the LCD's backlight wouldn't have flickered, but you know, if it's text flickered like that, I just don't remember if that's something that it did before, that's something new with the VFD. It could be the uh, firmware is just doing a screen refresh every minute or so. Uh, be interesting to compare it to a VFD and know if that same thing happens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this sort of thing interests you, then please subscribe and I will make more of them. Thank you.